Well, Chef, he's not Dr. Strangelove, but the doctor is now in MLS. Finally, Dr. Gold coming to Major League Soccer. Greg, he'll be able to step over the ball, hurt a player, and then patch him up. Right, it's going to break ankles all over the place next on E.T. Hey everybody and welcome to MLSNet.com's Extra Time. I'm your host Greg Lawless alongside Shep Messing as always. And this week we're looking at a couple of preseason tournaments, one down in San Antonio, a couple of international tournaments. We're also going to check in with Salt Lake and Columbus. Shep, we got to start though with the waivers. There were some players put on waivers this week, some big names, Celestine Babayaro from the Los Angeles Galaxy, Kelly Gray and Kyle Martino also from the Galaxy. Big changes out in LA. Yeah, big names, and for L.A., it's all about the salary cap. Obviously, they have to get under it, and I love Rude Hullet. I mean, how about Bobby Aro? Comes in there, didn't like his attitude, bang, puts him on waivers. I love that. That's good, and, you know, that was about Hullet's reputation himself because Hullet brought him in, you're not cutting it, get rid of him. But enough with L.A., the big markets, you know, let's look at some of the teams that aren't off traveling through Asia and Shanghai and Hong Kong. Let's start off with Salt Lake. Real Salt Lake, last year, didn't make the playoffs again. Right? This is now their third season in a row not doing that. New coach, Jason Christ, comes in. We had some questions about him because he didn't have any coaching experience, but he was always a fiery, intense guy. They're making changes this offseason. I'll tell you what, Greg. I absolutely love what Salt Lake and Jason Christ has done. First of all, first team in Major League Soccer with all coaches, assistant coaches, and the general manager, Garth Logaway. They were all players in Major League Soccer, so some great moves that he's made. And so definitely some understanding about what this, this league needs and what a team needs to, to compete. And one of the things that uh, Jason Christ has said is it's very important that he has competition at every single position. They're going to go with a 4-3-3. And I look at their front line, and you've got some really good players. Espindola up there, Robbie Finley. They just brought in this guy, Kenny Juker. I mean, they look like they're going to be very strong going into attack. Yeah, and I love the midfield as well, you know, with Beckerman and Kovalenko. Kovalenko they bring so. in. And how about Garth Largoway? I mean, he gets a phone call to go fly to Ibrox to watch this Dr. Goal, Juker, playing against Glasgow Rangers, the guy scores two goals, he signs him on the spot. I think any GM would sign him on the spot after two goals at Ibrox. The guy scored 170 goals in just four years. He's been to med school and then decided he wanted to play a little bit more. So certainly some grit in the midfield. They also have some flair. Javier Morales, the attacking midfielder from Argentina who joined them midway through the last season. And they look like they've got a South American back line now. They just picked up uh, Hamisem Olave from Deportivo Cali. The guy's six foot three, 220 pounds. He's like an Oguchi on Yewu. He's going to be yeah. in the middle back there. Replaces Eddie Pope. You still have Mateus Montilla. They also brought in Ian Joy and Nat Borcher. So the defense looks very solid as well. Yeah, they look good in the back. And we talked to Jason Kreis. He told us one of the reasons Nick Romando played so well last year, he felt that Chris Seitz was really pushing them. They're going to have those two in goal again. Jason Christ doing a great job building that team. They have a new stadium that opens at the end of the, toward the end of the season, and it looks like now they have a team that's going to fill that place. Like Real Salt Lake, the Columbus crew don't always get the love that they should be getting from the mass media of the world. Like, we're the mass like media, us. exactly. <laughs> so we're going to give a little bit of love to Columbus right now and talk about their season coming up. Uh, you know, they brought in Brian Bliss as a technical technical director this year, and I thought that was a really good move. Here's a guy who he knows Columbus because he played there and, and has been around there. He also knows the league. He's been a coach in the league, an assistant coach for a while now. It's a good guy to bring in. Yeah, I think that's a great move. And Siggy Schmidt, one of the smarter managers, coaches in the league, knows what he's doing. I always felt that last year, Greg, they were almost getting over the hurdle and then injuries. They never had the same starting 11. Get on a roll. Too many injuries. They, they never got it right. Well, they certainly have a balanced attack. Going forward, they already have, obviously, uh, Guillermo Barroscalotto is back this year. Eddie Gavin, who... A little enigmatic, but certainly could do some things. And uh, Robbie Rogers out there on the left side, lots of speed getting forward. They also brought in Nico Hernandez from Colorado in a trade for Tim Ward. And Alejandro Moreno, still a bulldog up there. I always love watching him play. Yeah, I love Moreno. I think Nico Hernandez is a, a key player because you talked about the attacking ability in the midfield, and I think they're really strong there. He'll get the service that maybe he didn't get Hernandez in Colorado. They need him to score goals. Well, if he can put in his form that we saw a couple of years ago when he scored a ton of goals for Colorado, that could make them a little dangerous. Now, in back, they're very untested, and this is, I think, they're going to be a real problem. Chad Marshall questions whether he can get through a full season without an injury. Ziggy Schmidt has already questioned his attitude a couple of times. They do have Frankie Hadek. He's back yep. there, lots of experience there, but 
it's a back line that, that it's a little shaky. Yeah, they're still tinkering. I mean, this is a work in progress. I think you're right. The back four, questionable. Danny O'Rourke, maybe move him instead of a holding midfielder, see if he could play as a center back. I like Will Hesmer in goal, but the back four, I think that's the real question mark. Well, Ziggy Schmidt has a lot of things to work on in this, in this offseason. I have a feeling this is the kind of team that's going to take a couple of months for them to gel a little bit. Maybe right off the bat, they're not going to look so strong, but... Just like last year, as they started to get healthy and the team started to come together toward the end, they started to make some make some noise. They had that great uh, result up in New England when Scalotto hit that shot, and uh, they might do it again this year. Well, the crew's Robbie Rogers and Eddie Gavin were called into the under-23 Olympic team ahead of qualification, which starts next week. Coach Peter Novak called in 24 players. He'll whittle that down to his roster that he'll take for the games. Now, this is a team that's made up of some European players and a lot of MLS guys. Yeah, Greg, remember, the teams don't have to release their players, and that's a problem for Peter Novak, but he does have six players coming from the European teams, including Freddie Adu, one from Mexico, the rest, the balance of the team, all from Major League Soccer. Yeah, well, two of the big names from Europe that aren't going to make it is Michael Bradley from Heron Veen and also Jonathan Spector from West Ham. However, West Ham has said they would release him for the semifinals. But looking at the MLS guys that are there, I mean, almost you don't even need these guys coming in from Europe. You have Josie Altidore in there, Sasha Klesch, and these are some exciting, attacking, and now seasoned pros. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Really, for Peter Novak, he has a very well-balanced team. When you have Josie Altidore up top, they have some creators in the midfield. They're solid in the back. And remember, Peter Novak and this U.S. team, they have some pressure on them now after failing to qualify the last time. Yeah, failing last time was a disaster because we had thought that after a couple of years of MLS, some of these guys, they would have no problem. They went down to Mexico, maybe some shenanigans about who was winning yeah. and who wasn't, but now the pressure is on. They have to make it to Beijing. Yeah, and I think they will. Peter Novak, yes, yeah, yeah. savvy, hard, organized, and he's got the talent. Right. Well, another tournament, international tournament, that gets going next week is the CONCACAF Champions Cup. The MLS entries are DC United and Houston Dynamo. DC goes down and takes on Harbor View of Jamaica. Houston goes down to Guatemala to play Municipal. The first legs are on the 12th of March. Give us a little idea of how difficult it is to go into one of these countries like Guatemala or Jamaica to play that first leg when you're in preseason. Yeah, Greg, you've done it. I've done it. There's no question it's hostile territory. But let's be honest. They have to get the job done. They have to beat these teams. Right. They're better than them. You're right. For Houston and D.C. United, it's a little tricky because they're in preseason. But these are games that they have to win. Well, what's the mindset when you're going into this first leg? You, you know you're a better team than these guys you're playing against. But obviously, they want to beat the better team, obviously. So what's the mindset, you think? Well, I think, I think you have to be cautiously aggressive. You're not going to go down there and try and... And, and play a defensive shell, you're better than these teams. So you have right. to be careful. You're playing away. It's a difficult environment, but they're beatable teams. So you have to be cautiously aggressive. Go after them, score goals, get the job done. Right. And you also want, don't want to open up too many spaces. You also know that, you know, when you come back to your home venue, that's when you really get the win. You go for goals. You, you finally just put it all away in the two-game series. And they do have to get over this. They need to beat these teams because then they're going to play against some of the better Mexican teams. Chivas is in there. Pachuca's in there. These are teams that consistently win the Champions Cup. So you have to get by these sort of smaller clubs, the minnows, get to that level, and then you worry about beating them. Yeah, listen, Greg, CONCACAF worldwide has grown in terms of credibility to teams that go from CONCACAF to the World Cup. Right. And that's why it's important that Major League Soccer continue to grow within CONCACAF. They have to win. Yes, they certainly do. Now, before they go down to those Champions Cup games, they're going to be playing in the Texas Pro Soccer Festival, Houston and D.C. United. They'll be playing against Toronto and Chivas USA will also be there. And that's a good warm-up for them. We'll see how they do, well, though, when that first leg comes around. Time to dip into the mailbox. And this week, we got an email from Washington Torres of Brooklyn. What a great name. That cool is. should be a left back from Mexico or something. Right? <laughs> but he wonders, is there a second team that's going to come into New York? It's a good question, isn't it? New York, huge market. Everyone would love to see that sort of intra-city rivalry with the New York Red Bulls and another team. Is a team coming? So good news, bad news. Washington, you're from Brooklyn. There will be a second team in New York, but it won't be in Brooklyn. It'll be in Queens. Fred Wilpon, owner of the Mets, 2010 probably, right where he's building a new stadium for the Mets, build a soccer stadium. I think it's going to happen. I think it would be fantastic. But Greg, there are other viable candidates as well. Yeah, there certainly are. And in the, in the wake of the Philadelphia announcement last week that Philly will join the league in 2010, there are some other cities that are already moving ahead 
looking to be that next franchise. St. Louis is there, Vancouver, Montreal, Miami, or someplace down in South Florida. But Washington, New York would be a great place. We'd all love to see a rivalry, just like we have Chivas USA in Los Angeles, Galaxy out in LA. I think that would be terrific. Now, you can email us anytime you want with any other questions. Email us at extratime at mlsnet.com. We'll try and get to those whenever we can. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have this week. We're going to take a break next week, but when we come back, we're going to have some special season previews between Chef and me. So join us for that, and we'll take it around. <laughs>